Hello riders or not, today on the vlog we are at the Kickback Motorcycle Show 2024. This year Kickback is bigger than ever before, bigger and better. So many motorcycles, so many different custom motorcycles at the show. I'll try to grab a few builders to interview, not all of them are next to the motorcycle so it will be chosen purely by finding who is next to the bike and interviewing them. I'll try to show you all the bikes at the show, or as many I can physically film in a day and just show the overall atmosphere. It will be a lot of music playing while I'll be showing the bikes because guys, it is impossible physically to cover every single bike in a detail, but I want to show you as much as I can. No rest. No, oh, no. I've been down so long that my mind can't get no rest. No, no. This ain't easy, darling. Cause the devil was on my trail. I've been running. about yes, your yes. build. Yes, Did yes. you build it yourself? Yes, well. And we go next to the bike and I'll stick this on you if right. that's okay. So you want to go over yes. there? <laughs> this uh, based it on a 1920 board racer, uh, Harley Davidson. So what they used to call them, uh, uh, they called them flat tanker board racers. Um, so I based it on 1920. So I wanted to keep the wheels are like both the same size, 21 inch front and back. Um, the tanks that they used to use on there were split, so oil was in the back, petrol in the front, which obviously they don't do now. Yeah. Um, so that was all handmade, handlebars all handmade, the frame is all handmade, except we use the Harley frame, bottom part of the frame for it. Um, and then from there on in, all the wiring I've done, uh, we machined out the front wheel to get the narrow front end in there. Um, yeah. So what you started with, have you started just with the engine and the gearbox or you had a little bit more, of, uh, you had a frame you mentioned as well, yeah. kept the bottom bit. Uh, I brought a bike from North Carolina, 1998 uh, 883 Sportster, which is what that engine is. So the actual bottom part of that frame and the engine is a 1998. So that's what I started with. Then okay. we took it all apart, stripped it all down, I took all the engine apart and then literally rebuilt the whole lot, sprayed and made it to that to fit. So that is based on 1998 Sportster, but you built it inspired by 1920s. 1920, yeah. 
The thing also with it, which most people don't realise, is it's totally road legal. It's got indicators, it? horn, high low beam, every, it's got everything on there, brake lights obviously, front and back. But people sort of say, well, where's the indicators? They're on the end of the handlebars. These are indicators. Wow, look at this. Have you done it yourself? Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. So these are indicators. All the switches um, are done and that are machined that in there. That is gorgeous. So, uh, yeah. So that, what is your background if you are able to machine the switches like this? I'm a carpenter like and joiner. Are you? So, <laughs> so some of the things like I say, uh, Dave at P&D made like say frame tank and exhaust pipes and then uh, all the other little bits and bobs that like I say I've done all myself. Who, who did your spring? They cut uh, is it Paco uh, front end on these and that, uh, that Dave from P&D source from America for me but they're a bit special because they're very narrow yep, usually yep. they're quite wide yeah. and that's hence the reason why we had to on the front hub we had to cut it in half machine it out put the two together re-weld it just so we could get the front wheel into those forks so how uh, did you get into building the bike how yep how, how did I yeah how, how, how this you decided oh I'm gonna build the bike and all of a sudden I've, you have a bike that people looking at and asking questions about I've been doing it I've been building and playing around since 1998 um, and I built the first one again with Dave from P&D and Chris and that um, in 99 finished it in 2000 uh, which won best in show but this it's been in magazines and that and it's still winning now and then from that when I sold that one then I'm thinking oh I'll do another one but I tend to stick to a theme that you don't see much of so like I've done the really way out choppers I did a digger a couple of years ago which is like the one over Chris and Dave got over there um, and then I'm thinking I haven't seen a, a modern 1920s bike so how did you get all the lines right uh, somebody helped you with a frame but then um, have you basically we based it actually on a, a, a 1920 bike Harley from pictures and things that we've got so actual length width frame everything about it is actually taken from an original so they set up the frame jig exactly yep. to a yep. 1920s it's, bike yep. and build the frame, frame just to match it yeah. and that's how you got the right because yeah. the proportions are just fantastic like, in they? incredible yeah. that, i bet that's incredible <laughs> to ride it wow and of course then like i say with the shocks you can adjust it to whatever weight you are yeah. so get, yeah. you don't feel it so it's like riding a soft tail but, but with also a hard it tail. feels so lightweight yeah, and having what is the engine 12 no it's an 883 83 yeah. engine yeah. but still like with a lightweight yeah. bike having a torque of a harley i hope that you have good brakes yeah yeah front and back discs four pot uh, on the front Actually, and back yeah you have proper brakes because that was well. the hard part about the front that brakes um with the disc brake on there and the wheel being so narrow hence the reason why we had to take so much yeah, out of the yeah, hub yeah. to actually build it so we could actually run the actual disc brake on the front as well so, so you built a very modern harley looking completely like the 1920s 1920s. old one because you have you have indicators you have uh, modern brakes yep. you have uh, also on the wiring believe it or not <laughs> you only need two switches for the whole of the bike really so you turn the ignition on and then you hold that button in that will start the motor up but the light will come on once the motor started so you don't use the battery so then you've got your left indicator right indicator press and hold the left one for a while then the horn will come on and that double click it really quick and that'll be the high and low beam and that to turn this off you double click it really cut that cut the engine off you did your wiring because that you did it yourself yeah all of it yeah wow because that, that sounds like a very complicated loop <laughs> <laughs> and it's all underneath the fuel tank and everything you, you can't see it no. and being that so that is like oil and petrol. and that's petrol yeah and I, like so when we put the uh, oil pipe uh, breather pipes in there we actually vented the oil one so otherwise you pressurize the tank otherwise so we vented that one as well as vented the fuel one as well so you don't get the build up of pressure in there that's amazing guys so yeah. that is incredible oh i wish you all the best riding it enjoy it and oh, well. i hope to see you in the next show with the next one yes i will be there thank you <laughs>
thank you. Channel's brilliant. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Hello there. I always say that every bike, especially after a custom bike, is a marmite. You either like it or not. Until I saw one, which is crowded now, which is actually a marmite. How, yeah. how did you come up with that idea? Um, well, I, I customized the bike. I went through it. There were things I w wasn't happy with. Um, as it came out of the factory and um, so I went through with newer parts of other um, ZX6s and um, then I got to the point and I thought I'm happy with this I need to put some of me into the bike I need to put some of my personality in and um, and a lot of people think that I'm Marmite <laughs> so it had to be added to the bike um, so my daughter came up um, with um, a design um, with Photoshop and then we gave it to the painter. We had it wrapped originally, he really liked it, gave it to a painter um, and, then, and then we ended up with this. So it's based on a Z ZX6R. Yeah. What parts, you said you, you were not happy with some parts. Oh, yeah. which Which parts you changed um, and why? Well, it's a 2003 bike. The um, suspension on them was um, good in its day, but showing its age pretty quickly. Um, so I, um, I put an Olin's shock on the back, fully adjustable. Um, I put uh, show a big piston forks on the front. I changed the, 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 the brake calipers to Yamaha because they're monoblocks, they're much better. Um, the, 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 the brake lever as well, the, the, the master cylinder is also a radial master cylinder. It's Marmite. Marmite. <laughs> um, I put um, later model clocks on, um, ZX10 mirrors because they have indicators, um, and I also put projectors in as well um, because the, the, the earlier lights weren't as good as they could be. Could turn it on. Uh, full titanium um, exhaust, a Krapovich. Um, I've had it, it mapped, um, custom map to match it, and it's about 10 horsepower over stock now. So, uh, I can uh, start it up. Sounds amazing. I shouldn't do it because it's cold, but. Sorry. That's brilliant, that's perfect. I think everybody enjoyed it. Sorry. <laughs> that's one thing that all the shows are missing, to hear the Noise. bike. But Noises. then if you hear all of them, it might be too much. Yeah, yeah. One at the time. Yeah, that is yeah. brilliant. I really, really like it's it. It's a lot of fun. I've had the bike for nearly 15 years now, and I've just done bit by bit. Every every year, I just change something very small. and. Do you ride it? All the time. All the time? Yeah, well, apart from this week, because I've been polishing yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it looks like it's standing somewhere nicely, but... but it's all powder-coated. Um, the paint was done um, seven years ago. Wow! Uh, and the guy did... Um, it's all paint. Um, wow. And the guy, when he painted it, he, um, he used uh, tape, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the tape on. Um, uh, and he's... Uh, he's uh, He's well into his 70s now, he's up in Sirencester and um, I was really impressed with what he did. But of course I ride it and I put paint chips in it so every now and again I have to go, the bike has to go back and all the, the panels have to go back and he has to repaint them yeah. because the, you know the bike is done. I've ridden the bike probably 30,000 miles. Oh, wow. So wow. it's been all over the UK, uh, been up to, into Ireland and um, yeah. It's um, it's it's my baby. It's still got the marmite in it. Yeah, it smells like marmite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's the last one I got it. Wow.
I found Ross. <laughs> Hi. Or oh, actually, you found me or I found you? Uh, either. I think we found each other. We I think. found each other with <laughs> Ross. And Ross is 27 years old, builder who built both two bikes. And I really want to encourage a younger generation to build motorcycles. And that's why I really want to interview you and ask wh why you chose not to build something very modern and uh, new, but like stick with well, it. Well, to be fair, it was with different circumstances. I've grown quite lucky because when I was little, my granddad found this in a barn in a box of bits. So that's did. a family heritage. Yeah, this is a family, a family heirloom, this one. And uh, when I was a kid, like my granddad used to take me on the on the back when I was like six years old. It was brilliant stuff. On this one? Yeah, on, on this, this one. Yeah, yeah, on this bike. But then, uh, unfortunately, he passed away last year. But before, before then, his health was uh, slightly deteriorated, and this was just sitting in the, in the garage. So I thought, well, what, why don't we just have a bit of a tinker with it? And I've got loads of photos of here where we re rebuilding the clutch, doing the exhaust together. And then he was acting like as like a foreman. He would sit on the back of me on the chairs and uh, tighten there, back there. Okay, now you've got it. And then uh, he's been on the, and it was sort of weird because he took me on the back when I was a kid. But then now, uh, well, it was like last year, he was on the back of me on this bike. So it was like a brilliant sort of like um, changing of hands of it. It's been brilliant, it has to be fair. 
and I absolutely love it to bits. And it, to be fair, it's wicked quick. It is. To be is fair. it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did the dragon rally on this as oh, well. Oh wow! Oh, wow. it's been mega. It's a triumph, isn't it? Yeah, triumph. Yeah, triumph. Five TA, 1962. 1962. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. your granddad had it from you? Oh no no, his, his was just in, literally in a box of bits. He literally just really? had a box of bits. Went in the Haynes van. He went. Okay, that goes into there, that goes into there, and then it was just like, wow. okay, then some better, okay, get rid of that, put that on, look at that, get rid of that, put so that on. basically, your granddad built the Dubai. Yeah, yeah, he and built. And then afterwards, you inherited it. Yeah, yeah, and basically. And he built it, and yeah, he, yeah. he gave you all the information about building Yeah, yeah, building pretty much, bikes. yeah, like wow. we got stacks of books there back at wow. home, and, with it, and when we were back at home, we were rebuilding the carbs. And then uh, we were there taking the, uh, the carbs into the dining room table. We were there like tinkering with them on the dining room. So yeah, it's been, it's been an absolute pleasure working on this thing as well. And uh, I'll show you like, uh, this is the key for it. Oh, wow, <laughs> look at the, this. That's the key for it. That's nice for comparison. Yeah. <laughs> so now oh. if, all, if you ever want to nick it, all you need is a teaspoon handle yeah, now yeah. for it. <laughs> and then the next one? This one is another family heirloom project. Because uh, my uncle, 25, 20, 25 years ago, he moved to Singapore. And this has just been left in the garage for, well, for 25 years. And uh, my grandparents on my dad's side, they, were th they just wanted to have a big clear out. I said, oh, we want to try, we want to get rid of this bike. It's, it's just taking up too much room. And I was like, no, you can't get rid of it. No. I said, well, maybe they're going to sell it. I said, no, don't sell it. Well, what should we do? Give it to me. So I just <laughs> took it. <laughs> so both of these are sort of like old family heirlooms. But this one was sort of forgotten for tw uh, 25 years. And then I've been slowly, slowly trying to bring it back to life. This one doesn't run yet, but this one runs. Okay. And, it's, and to be fair, it flies along. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. May, it may take me a couple of goes to get it started, like. It's always a bit of a faff of starting these ones. It may go, I don't, I don't know. Let's go. <laughs> Good boy! <laughs> That's brilliant! Nice, isn't it? That's so. That's lovely! <laughs> it's isn't it? brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. The Thank thing you. is, th this bike has got more features than most modern bikes. Because on here, you've got a little screw. So you've got, essentially, you've got cruise control that yeah, holds the throttle. Yeah. And if you look down here, you've got a gear indicator on the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, wow, <laughs> wow. We have a gear indicator here. So that's a gear, gear indicator. Yeah. It's a neutral at the moment. And then, yes, yeah, so you can see it going, oh, if I go, Oh, it was... Clutch. Well, nobody does it yeah. when it's standing still. When you're riding. <laughs> yeah, when you're riding. That's you... brilliant. That, so all the love for motorcycles. Yeah, and all the love with it, yeah. Came from your granddad. Yeah, pretty much, Inherited yeah. Inherited with a bike. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, I absolutely amazing. love it, I do. It'll stay in my family for generations. Even my grandkids will be having this, I think. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is it cut? <laughs>